and we are live all right so welcome back to another tears of themis stream uh so yeah last week we followed finished up that first criminal defense case that rosa had and she was promoted to partner at themis law firm so things are really looking up for her and this week so i was going to do a midweek stream um kind of exploring some of the other little bonus things that you get around the game. So for instance, there's like a little there's like a little event going on right now of like taking care of like pets uh, and there's these cute little like pixel pixel things like this, right? Um, but I'm thinking we're still going to do that probably as a bonus stream this week. Uh, last week was dealing with kind of some life admin stuff like and really good positive positive things uh, a lot of positive changes honestly happening in my life right now uh however it did mean that i didn't have much time for any extra streaming so yeah we are going to get going this week on episode three continuing with the main story and then with our kind of midweek stream we're going to be going through some of those kind of individual character stories uh looking into all those little kind of side events um so my cat Rhaenyra is she's been having a bit of a day be feeling a bit chatty so you might hear her in the background today oh hey Rhaenyra yeah mm-hmm yeah are we gonna be chatty today all right just one moment to take care of something for her and then we'll get started on this All right, thank you so much for your patience there. And we're gonna get started now on episode three, Weight of a Soul. Okay. Looks like, ooh, we're gonna be spending some time with Artem. So yeah, a bit sleepy today. The energy is probably gonna be kinda low, pretty chill. Um. Like I said, it's been a bit of a week, but we're here and we're going to get going. After winning Marius' case, Artem invites you to become his work partner and investigate cases together. You pick up the flash drive that Artem gave you and import the files into your tablet. You see a familiar name. X-Note? Um, I saw it when I entered your office that one time. The name is odd, so it made an impression on me. Oh. Big Data Analytics Lab, huh? The Big Data Lab? I remember referencing the research papers back when I was writing my dissertation. The Stellis Big Data Analytics Lab, or the Big Data Lab for short, is a joint effort between Pax Technology and Stellis City Government. The Big Data Lab legally collects data from every aspect of society, then feeds them into a supercomputer to conduct analysis. The supercomputer then compiles the data into practical information that is primarily used to assist the city government in decision-making processes. The Big Data Lab also provides services for civilians, such as weather forecasts, financial data analysis, navigation, and traffic monitoring. The X-Note is a tool that uses big data to predict crimes? Oh! Oh, that's... Mm, that's bad. That's... Oh. You know how many, like, sci-fi dystopian films there are about that? <laughs> okay, good. 
。未定事件簿，是大数据中心对过去几年间未明示产生的异常民事和刑事案件的汇总。Okay, so it's looking at crimes that have been committed, and then just kind of looking for correlations between them. That's、uh, much better than、uh, predictive technology for that. Anomalous? Do you mean cases with abnormal causes? 这种说法并不严谨。Matt Rosa is really not on point today. 异常，首先是指案件发生率。自大数据中心成立以来，未明示每年的案件发生率都维持在一个平稳的水平。可是最近三年，案发率明显上升，且上升的多为人口失踪和精神疾病案例。嗯。而案例异常增加的原因，正是我们要调查的。Artem slightly paused when he said "reason." He obviously has his own theories. Probably due to a lack of evidence, the strict Artem does not directly tell you what he believes the reason is. You guess that it must be not be something ordinary. While thinking about the anomalous cases that Artem mentioned, you walk to the digital workstation with your tablet in hand, and sit down. Based on Artem's description, the Xnote cases should have substantial effects on the public security. But why, Mr. Wing? Why would these kinds of cases be given to a law firm for investigation? That is a good question. 并非是由我们律所来调查，负责调查未定事件簿的，是一个叫做 N2X 的调查组。这是一个非官方的调查组，出资人是何印集团。我是调查组的成员之一。Ooh, a secret organization. N X X. I think it said N two X. Is how he put it. You notice that the file's case number is N X X zero one one, or N two X zero eleven. Have to listen. I think he said N two X is the way to pronounce it. Funded by the Pax Group. Why would they fund such a special investigations unit? You look at Artem. He calmly looks at you, as if observing your reaction. It doesn't seem like he'll elaborate further. Maybe there are things he can't tell me right now. Well, now that I have partnered up with you, am I a part of this investigative team now? From my personal perspective, I really hope you can work with me to investigate the case of the Weiding incident. But as for joining N2X, N2X. That's how he's saying it. All right, N2X. You don't need to make a decision. You can decide after you have participated in a few cases. Huh? Why? Investigation work is very dangerous. Joining N2X is not only the work of my team. You will bear more responsibility. But you don't have to worry. No matter how you choose to join, you will be my partner in my daily work. 如果到时候你不想再查未定事件簿了，也没关系，我们可以在其他的常规案件上继续合作。此外，对未定事件簿的调查是需要严格保密的，我认为你值得信任。Although you don't know why Artem so cautious, the fact that he trusts you this much warms your heart. It would be reckless of you to join the N2X simply on a whim or out of gratitude. All right. Let's work on a few cases, and I'll sleep on it. 好，那我们先来看这起案件。Artem takes off his coat and puts it on the back of the couch. He picks up his tablet and opens the same document. 本案编号为 N2X 零幺幺，原本是一起人口失踪案。嗯。Initially. 没错。本案的被害人名叫许平，是海奥森保健品公司的资财部部长，于三个月前失踪。Hmm. As he talks, Artem uses his stylus to write and illustrate his points on the tablet. He has a slight frown. His azure eyes are calm and focused, but they seem less frigid than usual. Maybe it's because he's talking about what he does best. This Artem seems a lot more animated and personable. 
，警方在许平家中发现了他的遗书，因此推断，许平是因坚守自盗被发现而畏罪自杀。嗯。Artem suddenly lifts up his head, and your eyes meet. 接受一下文档同步。You look at your own tablet and notice the file transfer request. You accept the file transfer and see that Artem has already written detailed analysis and annotations with the file. The police classified it as a suicide, right? 没错，但案卷上。打上了存疑的标签，且从大数据中心对许平的日常行为分析看，许平没有任何自杀的前兆。嗯，就此认定许平自杀，无法向他的家属交代。As Artem takes you through the case files points of interest, you can't help but feel immensely lucky and happy. You don't understand why he chose you to be his partner. But you will undoubtedly learn much from him. You must redouble your efforts in the future to live up to his expectations. Bloodworth is suspected to have jumped into the ocean, but his body was never found. His death was only ruled a suicide due to the presence of suicide note. As for his thefts. Bloodworth had been reselling controlled substances that Erson used to produce pharmaceuticals. Bloodworth's client was Gordon Grant, the owner of a popular chain pharmacy in the city. Bloodworth and Gordon met just before Bloodworth's suicide, rather his disappearance. I think Gordon Grant is the key individual, who must be investigated. Hmm. 工程是必须要调查的。此外，坚守自盗从常理上来说，并不是能逼人放弃生命的罪名。这一反常，也是许平案被列入未定事件簿的原因之一。嗯。Suddenly, Artem's phone rings. He stands up and walks to the side to take the call. 特密斯·佐然，哪位？什么？你父亲去世了 ？Oh shit! Shock flashes across Artem's face, but he quickly composes himself. 把你的电话交给现场负责的警官，我需要简要了解一下情况。嗯，好。我明白了，严队。你把电话还给龚玉泽吧。嗯。龚玉泽，你现在要做的就是保持冷静，配合警方，不要有任何冲动的举措。我和我的搭档现在就出发，会以最快的速度赶到现场。By the time Artem hangs up, you've already prepared everything for a field investigation. Shall we head out? Are you driving or should I? Oh my gosh, he his eyes are like pinpoints. He is alert and in shock over something. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> Artem looks at you and unexpectedly gives a small smile. 看来我是需要适应一下有搭档的工作节奏。<笑> yeah. 我开车。Artem picks up his keys and briefcase and closes the screen that was displaying the N2X011 case file. He pauses for a moment. 这个案子要从头开始调查了。Why is that? 工程死了。就在刚刚。Oh shit! Oh, that was the guy we were gonna question about the case. Okay. Oh no. Well, there goes that lead. <laughs> All right, we're getting interrupted by Artem suddenly slams on the brakes. An electric car ran a red light. How horrible! <laughs> Oh no, we can't allow that. <laughs> kind of debate him on the road. I don't know. I feel like the the road rage of lawyers is in a class of its own. Okay. What do you got to say for yourself, buddy? Can't tolerate you, Bridge. That's valid. Uh, that's that's honestly valid. But I'm sorry. 
yeah, you're you're risking your life and the lives of others uh, by not obeying traffic laws. That's that's also a very good point. Um, oh, we don't have any intuition, so let's go with the serfs get scratched. How about no? This is all on you guys. Uh, nah. Yeah, you're the one who read, who ran the red light. Think you can run people over just because you have a nice car? Dude, you ran the red light! Yeah, it is a violation of traffic laws. <laughs> Alright. Well, after that brief interruption... Gosh, Artem has such a nice car. <laughs> On the way to Gordon's house, Artem explains the situation to you. Gordon Grant lived in a suburban area with his son Harry, his mistress Joanne Scott, his illegitimate daughter Joey, and Joey's nanny. This morning, at 11.50, Gordon drank some herbal medicine that he had been taking as secondary treatment for his heart disease. Soon afterwards, Gordon suddenly fell ill. Scott was the only person by his side at the time. Scott immediately called for help, but by the time Harry and the nanny arrived at the scene, Gordon was dead. Oh. Gordon was in the process of making his will. Harry suspected foul play by Scott and called the police. Have we got like, is it like a knives out type of situation? Myocardial... <laughs> Infarction. All right. The police think it's a premeditated murder. 没错，工程因心脏病长期服药，这是全家人都知道的。嗯。药物过敏是有剂量要求的，如果只是误服少量，未必会造成无法挽回的后果。而工程的过敏药物用量，远超常规水平。Harry called the police, so why is he the prime suspect? Mm, so he might have access to more substances, yeah, through Hmm. Is he an old client of yours? Why would he call your personal phone? Every lawyer has their own network of clients. It's not polite to inquire about such personal matters. You had casually blurted out your question while thinking about the case. Artem is offended for sure. <laughs> you cover your mouth and timidly glance at Artem. However, he doesn't seem slighted. He parks his car and answers you while you two walk to the house. Oh, that's a nice house. I see. Sorry, I shouldn't have asked. So, Mr. Wing's already familiar with the Grant family. The reason Mr. Wing is handling the N2X011 might have something to do with his familiarity with the Grants. It would be more... I, I feel like, like it's more likely that they're related than it just being coincidental. Artem talks to himself while walking, and he doesn't seem to be expecting a reply. Oh, that is a nice house. Wow. Oh, Rhaenyra, hey, you got the zoomies? You got the zoomies? Oh, my cat is zooming back and forth behind me. <laughs> a homicide in the area, and the presence of the police piques the media's interest. Of course it did. To prevent the media from interfering, the police drew the mansion's curtains shut. Despite it being daytime, all the lights are on. 
A young man in his early twenties is sitting on a couch in the living room as the two police officers watch him. He must be Harry Grant. A young girl is crying by the railing on the second floor, which makes Harry even more restless. Harry becomes emotional as soon as he sees Artem. He grabs Artem's hand and presses his forehead into it while sobbing. Artem kneels and pats Harry on the back. I mean, his dad did just die. <laughs> it might be a time to cry. A police officer walks over. It's Darius. Oh, hey, Darius! Oh, hey! <laughs> Man, I mean, he did was dealing with the last uh, homicide case, so it seems like he's this kind of precinct's uh, homicide detective. <sighs> Hello, Captain Morgan. Yes, I'm his partner now. Can you update us on the case? Can you elaborate? Oof. Cooking pot. Interesting. Cooking Hmm. Huh. Captain Morgan, can you show me to the kitchen? Oh, oh, Rhaenyra, let's let's not let's not knock things over. Let's not do that right now. There we go. Darius nods. He continues to explain the case to you as he leads you to the kitchen. Nothing suspicious is in the kitchen, and there's an eyewitness and physical evidence. Harry's situation isn't looking good at all. Upon your return to the living room, Artem has calmed down Harry for the time being. Artem hands him the tissue, then stands up and walks towards you and Darius. Darius and Artem have crossed paths many times, so they're familiar with one another. Mm-hmm. That is true. Artem softly pats your shoulder. Understood. Artem nods at Darius, and the latter's expression suddenly grows solemn. They go into another room. You sit down by Harry and hand him your card. Oh, Sure am. He you blush. You didn't expect Artem to say such praises about you to a client. He's too kind. How do you feel now? Want to tell me about the whole thing? Oh, all right. 
Let's get some questioning going. Crying child. Earlier, I heard a child crying. Was that your sister? By that woman, do you mean Joanne? Is she married to your father? <laughs> oh. Oh, that's a mess. Earlier, you asked the police to watch over Joey. You seem to care about her a lot. Oof. Oh, buddy. Oh, oh, Rainier! Oh my goodness, what are you doing? Don't don't eat that! Don't eat that! Right, she's she's having a day. My my cat is having having some, definitely <laughs> definitely having a day. Uh, all right, all right, honey. Let's uh, are we good? Are we good? We're done. We're done knocking things over and causing a ruckus and trying to walk all over my keyboard. All right, good. Okay. All right, we're getting quite a few cat interruptions today. <laughs> All right, drug allergy. Oh, okay, drug allergy. Oh, yes. I heard that you're studying pharmaceutical sciences. Do you come back home often? Hmm. 这栋别墅是我母亲留下的，虽然我根本不想见到我爸和那女人，但也不能看着他们，请将我母亲的东西。The hmm. police found drugs in the public trash bin. Would you mind telling me about them in simple terms? I don't have much pharmaceutical knowledge. Harry is quiet for a while. He then lets out a gloomy sigh. 那些药片，是我买了原料。在学校实验室里提纯的 Contradictory incentives. <laughs> There's been a rift between you and your father for some time. Why would you suddenly decide to purify drugs? Did your father do something recently, or did someone talk to you about it? Suddenly, you recall Artem's suspicions. Does Gordon's death have something to do with the N2X-011? Could someone be using Harry as a means to ease Gordon, to erase Gordon and any leads related to him? That does make things look pretty bad for you, Harry. Family background. How did you learn about that? Did your father tell you himself? Shiwajadajatin 这是他们一早就公正过的。母亲去世时，将全部财产都留给了我。我爸手里那点现金，还不够他活着的时候挥霍的。嗯。
哪用得着立遗嘱？啊！丁医生告诉我，乔岩曾向他询问我爸的身体状况，显然，那个女人早就得到消息了。Doctor and lawyer. Wills are mostly drawn up by specialized lawyers, and it's a confidential affair. Why would your family doctor know about it? Also, wouldn't it be normal for Joanne to care about your father's health? What makes you believe that she's in it for an inheritance? Ding Yisheng and my father's lawyer is very good. He also reminds me. As for Qiao Yan, is he involved in my father's murder? 还不是为了钱。以前他可从来没有主动关心过我爸的身体。Taking one phone call as proof, isn't that a bit rash? 我虽然提出了药物准备着，但一直没能下决心，直到今天。左律师当初料理我母亲的遗产，曾帮我制定过稳妥的保护措施。可就在前几天，我清查财产清单的时候发现。我爸买通了整个财产托管方，不仅倒卖了我母亲留下的字画古董，还伪造手续，想要转移我名下的药店股份。That's that's really shitty. I mean, it doesn't justify murder, but still, that's really shitty. 我今天是找我爸要说法来的，可我没想到他竟然那么无耻。他说他把遗产都捐了，也不会给我留着。我忘不了母亲临终时的样子，我真怕自己保护不了她留下的产业，所以才会下手。Looks like De Dr. Dennard's call lit the fuse to this tragedy. It really is looking like he did it. Stopping the crime. Since you had already purified the drug, why did you discard your murder plan in the end? You think I'm not guilty? 你真的相信我吗 ？If you really went through with your plan, you wouldn't be so terrified right now. You hesitated, didn't you? Or did something else happen? 我爸有心脏病，常年服用中药。我本来是想趁煎药的时候把过敏药物加进去，但方姨阻止了我。Okay. Oh, probably the nanny, right? Fanny? 是乔乔的保姆。Yeah. 乔乔出生后，一直是他在照顾乔乔。他是跟着那女人一起搬进来的。方姨似乎知道我手里的东西是什么。她看到我拿着药站在灶台边，冲过来劝我不要冲动。他说：“为了一个人渣，毁了自己的大好前程不值得。”我本来就不是个胆大的人，不然也不会忍气吞声这么多年。母亲去世了才。所以，方姨一说，我就犹豫了。You felt scared afterwards, and then decided to throw away. Oh, yes, Renier. Let's. Can we not? Can we stop interrupting things? Thank you. You felt scared afterwards, and then decided to throw away the tablets. 是的，但我不确定的是，方姨冲过来打掉我手中的药时，是不是有那么一片碰巧掉进了药壶里？也许凶手真的就是我。Okay, that explains why he's not sure if he did it or not. Yeah, things are looking bad for him. Don't stress yourself out too much, Mr. Wing, and I will find evidence. 警方说，垃圾桶里的药片和我给出的数量对不上，少了一片。哦，而我爸体内检测出来的药剂含量，正好就是那一片的含量。Okay. I heard you talking about Miss Scott and Miss Morris. Where are they? 警方让他们各自回屋了，不许随意走动。Did either of them go into the kitchen today? 方姨要给我爸煎药，当然会去。乔燕也去过。我第二次去厨房的时候碰到过他。The second time， 我我心里觉得不踏实，就又去了一次，想把那壶药倒掉。
但我刚进厨房，乔燕就跟了进来，我只好借口拿饮料离开了。Harry went to the kitchen the second time. Could he have tampered with the medicine? Okay. Could Harry tamper with the medicine the second time? Went to the kitchen. I mean. Okay. When was that? That was at ten fifty-three. I don't know what time. No. Okay. Because what time was the second time he went to the kitchen? We didn't get that. Because that would help with that. Hmm. I'm. With these kinds of things, I can never quite tell what pieces of information they're wanting me to put together, because the pieces of information that I would be putting together on my own are either not present or not clear which things refer to it. But let's see, it matches the doses. Missing tablets. I mean, if it says that nobody went, yeah, because it says if nobody was seen. Okay. Yeah. So, because nobody approached it, so the amount of drugs found in the trash bin and in Mr. Grant's body perfectly equals the amount of drug that Harry had refined. If Harry didn't lie, then he wouldn't have more tablets the second time he entered the kitchen. He also didn't have any opportunity because Joanne was there. Therefore, we can rule out the possibility of him tampering with the medicine during his second visit to the kitchen. Why did Miss Scott go into the kitchen? 去给我爸端药。他刚看过我和我爸吵架，能不借机会先引起吗？那。如果母亲当初没有听信我爸的花言巧语，坚持和他离婚，让他净身出户，也许今天就不会。Harry's eyes are swollen and bloodshot, but his face is extremely pale. You put a hand on his icy hands, but do not know what you should do to comfort him. As of right now, every piece of evidence is against Harry. There is a chance the case is negligent homicide, but. Fortunately, Artem concludes his private conversation with Darius, and both of them return. By the looks on their faces, it wasn't a cheery conversation. 怎么样，有线索吗 ？You shake your head. Morris and Scott both went into the kitchen, but we don't have anything concrete on them. Harry himself even almost believes that he committed the crime. Artem doesn't seem surprised. He only nods in acknowledgement. I think we have to question the family doctor, Fanny Morris, and Joanne Scott. I also suspect. You tap on the notepad and draw an N in the air with your finger. Artem raises one eyebrow, and exchanges a look with you. He knows what you're referring to. Gu Yunze, you 先休息一下吧。我们还需要询问其他人。左律师，我是不是真的没希望了？只要你真的没行凶，那么我们一定会帮你脱罪。Artem extends his hand towards you, and you hand him the notes you wrote when questioning Harry. Artem reads at a terrifyingly fast pace; ten lines a second would be too slow. After flipping through the notes, he's done. 严队，能否麻烦警方？联系丁医生。如果你认为必要的话，可以。Darius nods and immediately puts someone on it. Oh, we got. All right, we'll be back in just one moment because this little, this little brat. Yeah, yeah, you need your snack. You're right. You're right. You need your snack. We'll be back in just a moment. Yeah.
let's get you, let's make sure you got your snack. And we are back. <laughs> you hear police shouting outside. Reporters will do anything for a headline nowadays. <laughs> Man, I feel like every case we have a point where we need to like have a debate with a reporter, huh? <laughs> I'm just here to record the facts. Yeah, not worth being sent to jail over. You won't cause any trouble? Okay. Absolutely not. You're not allowed to come into somebody's residence without their permission or a warrant. You'll leave after a quick look. Uh, how about... No. Yeah, you can't. You're not allowed to do that without credentials. This is terrible. The media has a responsibility to let the people know. Yeah, uh, do stop trying to interfere with police work. <laughs> All right, let's get going. The police escort Harry to another room. Before Dr. Dennard arrives, Artem decides to question both Morris and Scott. I caught sight of Joey when we arrived. She isn't tall enough to reach the stove. Assuming Harry is innocent, then the culprit has to be either Scott or Morris. They were both in contact with, Gordon's gra with Gordon Grant's medicine. Fang Yi is a important person to but his attitude is a Yeah. Morse contra contradicting behaviors are... Hmm. Fanny's actions are in clear contradiction with her statements because... Yeah, she claims she saw Harry enter the kitchen that Harry dropped the tablets and the medicine, which led to Gordon's death. However... Yeah, she convinced him to abandon this course of action. I was thinking about those two things actively contradict each other. Harry said that Fanny stopped him from dropping the tablet, but she was the one who told the police that Harry was responsible. Was she actually successful in stopping Harry? Maybe it's as those two feared. During their confrontation, was the tablet accidentally dropped into the medicine? Fang Okay, so he was accused of going to to we should place Joey with her mother. She seems... Ugh. Oh, um, probably because she doesn't actually want kids and Joey is just a means to an end. Ciao,前天不足总是生病,不像别的孩子一样聪明活泼,不招工先生的喜欢。
，反倒是少爷，对乔乔一直很好。没来公家之前，少爷还偶尔会去看望乔乔。听说不在了的夫人工作很忙，很少关心少爷。少爷他大概是觉得自己和乔乔同病相怜吧。你曾向警方作证，龚宇泽有谋害工程的嫌疑。我们作为龚宇泽的律师，需要向你了解详细的情况。Yeah, let's talk about your eyewitness details. How did you find out that Harry was planning to tamper with the medicine? 龚先生的药必须放在灶上，用明火煎，要煎两个小时。中间还要去调整火候大小，差不多半小时一次。今天的药是十点开始煎的，差不多十点四十的时候，我去看火，正遇上少爷拿着药片打开盖子要往里放，我吓坏了，赶紧过去打翻了少爷的药。少爷就是和龚先生吵架，一时气急了。被我劝了之后，很害怕，就把药扔了。现在想想，我也很后悔。那药片说不准就是我打翻药时候掉进去的。嗯，我就该倒了药重新煎，就说没看好火糊了底，最多也就是被龚先生骂而已。反正他早就想解雇我了。早就想解雇你？为什么？ Yeah. 大概，大概是嫌弃我乡下人不上台面吧，我也不清楚。You're not sure？ 算了，这是方姨的私事，我们不方便问。Arden puts a hand on your shoulder and gently squeezes it. Fanny seems relieved that you're letting it go. Clearly, she's hiding something important. How did you know that Harry's tablets would be harmful to Gordon? Gong 先生的用药禁忌，全家人都知道，因为乔乔的药里就有那种东西。龚先生还特意吩咐我把药分开放。我就是看着少爷手里的药和乔乔的很像，才起了戒心。嗯、mm. ，Yeah, that's something that that Harry said too. That it was similar to Joey's medication. Yeah, marital relationship. After his wife passed away, do you know why Gordon didn't marry Joanne? 其实，乔夫人和龚先生的感情并不是很好。龚先生尤其不喜欢乔乔。除了偶尔给乔乔几颗糖，龚先生几乎是不理乔乔的。龚先生不提结婚，可能也有乔乔的缘故吧。乔岩与工程感情不和。乔乔又不讨喜，工程为什么还要与他维持关系 ？Arden flips through the police documents. 乔乔今年七岁了。依照你的描述，不要说结婚，乔岩与工程的关系都不可能保持七年。嗯，具体的我也不太清楚，就知道乔夫人偶尔会帮龚先生打理生意，大概是龚先生认可乔夫人的能力吧。Arden motions for you to take note to note this information down. Does he think that Joanne may be involved in N two X zero eleven? So you don't see a reason for Joanne to murder Gordon, correct? 当然不会，乔夫人没有工作，如果没有龚先生，她哪能过上富太太的日子？她才不会谋害龚先生。That's that's valid, especially like. Okay, but she, yeah, she really doesn't have a motivation to murder him because he died before he finished redrafting the will, and the will would have left everything to Joanne. And so Joanne really doesn't have any motivation to kill him. Fanny's words are reasonable, but her reaction is a bit too dramatic. You sneak a glance at Artem; the corner of his mouth imperceptibly raises, as if he has discovered a critical flaw. Yeah, let's look at those relationship dynamics. I noticed that you refer to him as Master Harry instead of Master Grant. Are you two on good terms? 
。哎，在这个家里，除了乔乔和我关系最近的，确实就是少爷了。我原本有一个女儿，但很小就夭折了。后来就没再有孩子了。我当乔乔是我自己的孩子，少爷对乔乔好，我看着少爷也觉得亲切。It's always the nannies. 至于龚先生和乔夫人，我一个保姆， yeah. 也不怎么能和他们说上话。那你为什么会毫不犹豫地向警方指证龚玉泽？你就没想过，可能是其他人在你劝阻了龚玉泽之后，又对那胡药做了手脚？这、这、这不可能吧？家里懂药的，除了龚先生，就只有少爷。嗯，而且少爷确实是一不小心才……我听说这种情况，关几年就能放出来。律师，你劝劝少爷，不要和警察顶嘴。你帮他争取，争取个宽大处理。Didn't you just say that Joanne helps out Gordon with work? She doesn't know anything about pharmacology. Fanny is suddenly nervous. She briefly looks up at you and then lowers her head again. 乔夫人也就是个文员之类的吧，她连乔乔吃什么药都不过问，能懂什么呀？嗯。Entering the kitchen. Did anyone else enter the kitchen this morning other than Harry? 还有，乔夫人也去过，去给龚先生端药。You just said that his medication takes two hours to prepare. You started at ten, and Gordon died at about eleven fifty. Regardless of when Joanne took the medicine to Gordon, it couldn't have been two hours. 乔夫人端药大概是在十一点四十，我当时正要去看火，看到他和少爷都在厨房。乔夫，嗯 ，What was Harry doing at the time？ 少爷从厨房拿了瓶饮料出来。Okay, that yeah, that matches up with what Harry said. What about Joanne? If you saw her taking the medicine before it was done, why didn't you remind her？ 我提醒了。但乔夫人说，药煎得太浓，龚先生嫌苦不爱喝，与其剩下，那还不如煎淡一点都喝掉。What kind of shoddy reasoning is that? 其实乔夫人心里还是在意龚先生的，她给龚先生端药还烫了手。嗯、hmm.。Frequency of entering the kitchen, yeah. How many times did Joanne and Harry each go into the kitchen? Fanny falls silent, seemingly trying hard to remember. 嗯，少爷去过两次，乔夫人就去过一次。你确定？确定。我的房间在一楼，上午我和乔乔就在我房间，有人进出厨房，我能听见。Hmm. Okay. Are you confident that Harry committed the crime? 我刚才不是说了，药片可能就是我拦着少爷时不小心掉进去的。Yeah. 你有没有想过，如果真是这样，你也参与了行凶的过程，和龚宇泽一样，都是过失行凶。Morris is shocked by Artem's words. She stares blankly at you all, unable to utter a word. 果然，不要恐吓证人。Yeah, come on, Artem. Being respectful of Darius, Artem doesn't press his line of questioning any further. Ah, 连队，我们暂时没什么要问方姨了，但在取证结束之前，还请继续隔离方姨。这是自然，她现在是本案的重要证人。Darius waves a hand, and the two officers come to escort a dumbstruck Morris back to Joey's room. Mr. Wing, you really spooked her. 
it'd actually be hard to find her guilty of negligence. I just want to confirm. She's small and lacks legal knowledge. This kind of person is very easy to abuse. From the questions you asked earlier, it's very obvious that she has a legal connection with the company. The company wants to get rid of her. Yeah. Besides, in her confession, there are many conflicts and conflicts. Right. Her testimony about drug... Contradictions, con, contradic, contradictions. Goodness, that's a word to say. Drug contradictions was contradictory. Fanny may have lied about something. Her statements contradict each other because. Okay. I mean, all right. What are all these things? Let's see. Joanne was likely able to stay with Gordon due to her work skills. However, she's not legally entitled to an inheritance, as they're not married. Fanny claims that Harry is the only one in the family with any knowledge of drugs, aside from Gordon. Everyone in the family knew the cautions regarding Gordon's condition. Joey's medication contains a substance that could trigger lethal reactions in Gordon. Yeah, those two things... Because even though he's the one who has like the most knowledge about generally pharmaceuticals, everyone in the house is familiar at least with the drugs that are being used within the house. Fanny previously said that the only people who knew about drugs in this house were Harry and the late Mr. Grant, which is why she believed Harry was the murderer. Yes, but she also mentioned that all the people know the use of the drugs. 这就意味着，不管是不是药学专业，家里人都有行凶的必要知识。Yeah. Her statement painted herself as a potential suspect. She's also responsible for Joey's medicine. 但从我刚才吓唬她的反应看，我更倾向于她是被乔烟或者其他什么人利用。嗯哼。Huh. Could Artem be referring to people outside the villa? Is it related to N2X011? You glance at Darius. You're not sure if Artem told him anything about N2X011, or if so, how much. Forget it. It's neither the time nor the place. Putting the N2X case aside, you continue to follow Artem's train of thought. Every time we brought up Mrs. brought up Miss Scott, she seemed quite nervous. She's definitely hiding something. I remember that she wasn't too happy about Miss Scott being unable to care for Joey. Could she really be collaborating with her? She takes Joey as her own daughter. It makes more sense for her to be on Harry's side since Harry is nice to Joey. No, 一个服务了七年的保姆，为什么会一见到外人？ Yeah, that's that's fair. His method is like he's trying to show off his good relationship with Joey and Joey. But in reality, if all have a common interest, the relationship will always be one person. Could there be a common enemy or goal for both Fanny and Joanne? See, according to Fanny, Joanne got burned about 11:40 when she went to the kitchen to fetch the medicine for Gordon. Hmm. Joanne was likely able to stay with Gordon due to her work skills. However, she's not legally entitled to an inheritance as they're not married. Hmm. And let's see. Fanny said Gordon had the intention of firing her because she was uneducated. However, Fanny's reaction tells another story. Okay, so like Fanny definitely, hmm, inheritance dispute. Harry heard that Gordon planned to leave all his assets to Joanne upon his death. Harry was enraged by this arrangement and wanted to murder Gordon. Like that's the that's the thing. That's the thing that makes me think Joanne didn't do it because, like, 
she doesn't serve to benefit in any way from his death. I don't know, maybe. But if we're saying that, like, they both have beef with, like, our late Gordon. I'm not sure which pieces of information. Okay, yeah. A common interest. Could they both hold resentment towards Mr. Grant? Joanne couldn't obtain legal marital status while Fanny was at risk of being fired. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Aside from that, being unable to obtain spousal status and at risk of being fired made both Joanne and Fanny unhappy with the situation. Hmm. There'd be a... Yeah. The inheritance! Murdering Mr. Grant and pinning it on Harry might have seemed like a reasonable revenge plot for a marriage-denied mistress and a to-be-fired nanny. If Mr. Grant's will is valid, then Joanne would be the primary beneficiary. If his will isn't valid, and if Harry were a murderer... Chow Chow. Oh, so if the plan was for the inheritance to go to Joey and then Joanne to basically control it through her. Yeah. Right. Fanny loves Joey like a daughter. It's plausible that she was trying to get the inheritance for Joey, as Mr. Grant didn't care for her. Hmm. Ah, I understand. Captain Morgan, please get Scott, Mr. Scott for us. Darius nods and goes upstairs to fetch Scott. Is this another reporter? <laughs> oh, it's the neighbors. The Grant's neighbors have come to check on the commotion. Have them leave at once. If the son goes to prison, do all the assets go to the mistress? You know, that's what we're trying to figure out. This is a crime scene. Please leave. This family is so weird. <laughs> Valid. Have some respect, though, please. Even if you dislike your own father, you can't go poisoning him. What an evil man. You know, we haven't... Nothing is concluded yet. Yeah, the case is still under investigation. Please don't interfere. All this sneaking around in broad daylight. Let me take a look at what you're hiding. Ma'am, this is a crime scene. How far do we have on this one? Ooh, this is a little bit of a shorter one than our previous case. We might actually get through... What time is it now? We may actually get through all of episode three, depending how long these are for this stream. Um, let's see, there's 16 of those. Let's see where we're at once we get through um, these next couple ones. And then if we're looking good on time, we'll continue with episode three. And if we're not, we might um, actually just like end the stream early this week. Or possibly do a little bit of those um, other investigations. Though it feels a little weird to kind of take a break from a murder investigation to go walk around town. While waiting for Scott, the police notify you that the Grant's family doctor is currently vacationing abroad and won't be back for at least half a month. 
Obviously, Gordon's lawyer won't admit he has breached lawyer-client privilege. He refuses to cooperate with the investigation, and claims that he will only release Gordon's will with the ca when the case is closed. Until now, there hasn't been any substantial evidence linking this case to N2X011. You want to ask Artem if this could really be a coincidence. You make a mental note of where the officers are working in the living room, shield your face with your notebook, and lean towards Artem's ear. Mr. Wing. Artem wasn't expecting you to draw so close. He jolts to the side, startled. You got your mom. Oh, he's got a little... Oh, he's got a little blush. He's got a little blush. <laughs> Artem keeps his voice low to avoid drawing attention. Do you think Mr. Grant's death has something to do with the N2X case? Though his lawyer and Dr. Dennard are a bit odd, it's not totally incomprehensible. Artem pauses for a second to think before answering you. He was not expecting you to mention the N2X011 case. We can do that? Wouldn't that make any evidence we find inadmissible? The evidence would be admitted no matter what. The evidence would be admitted no matter what? You can't help but think of Luke. You sit up straight and put down your notebook, temporarily shelving the matter regarding Dr. Dennard and Gordon's lawyer. You start to mentally review Harry's and Morris's statements. While thinking of these manners, you can't help but feel that someone's staring at you. You turn your head and happen to catch Artem turning away with reddened ears. <laughs> <laughs> Awkwardness permeates the room. Great timing. You switch back into work mode while Artem adjusts his tie and adopts a serious expression again. Oh, yeah. Scott sneers and sinks into the couch. Oh, madam. Please cooperate with the investigation. Yeah, let's talk about your professional background. Let's start at Temple. Can you tell your own background? I 我, 我是制药专业的 Okay, so that further contradicts the whole oh, only Harry would know thing. Yeah, pharmaceutical sciences. Doesn't that mean... 我大学毕业后就跟了工程 给他做助理和当个文员没什么区别 我已经很多年没有用过专业知识了 忘得差不多了 Oh, sure, yeah. Alright, that's convenient, isn't it? Yeah, let's talk about... the kitchen. Chow Nushi, today at the end of the day, you've been in the kitchen. 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 Yes, we're trying to establish that. We're trying to collect evidence to prove that. Yeah, thank you, Darius. While Joanne Scott is speaking, you notice that her left index finger is neatly bandaged and secured with a tidy knot. How did you hurt your finger? Okay, that lines up. Did you bandage it up, bandage it up yourself? The orientation of the knot seems like someone else did it. The knot in Joanne's finger is too tidy for someone to do single-handedly. It appears that someone else did it. That is like a, a tidy little knot. 
Ooh. Just when you think that you've caught Joanne, she suddenly starts crying. Joanne took the medicine at 11.40, and Gordon died at approximately 11.50. Bandaging the burn, drinking the medicine, the adverse drug reaction. Could all of this have happened within 10 minutes? Let's talk about your relationship with your daughter. Do you usually take care of Joey? Oh, wow. She's not even denying it. <laughs> yeah, me too, Rosa. Me too. Yeah, talk about your last will. Do you know the contents of his will? You two have such a good relationship, so he should have included you in it, right? You had intentionally said that her relationship with Gordon was good. She didn't deny it. Gordon Oh, oh no. Oh no. From her expression, it appears that Joanne views her daughter as a means to obtain money. You are disgusted. Yeah, she's definitely it seems like she probably had Joey as a means of kind of like trying to lock down her rich affair partner. Oh, good lord. But then neither of them really care about this kid. Lushi, 还有一半是公宇泽的。啊，也许他在银行里还有些现金，这我就不清楚了。什么？Scott suddenly shoots up from the couch and starts shouting with her hands on her hips. 我跟了他八年，还给他生了个女儿，他居然是个穷光蛋，他他一直骗我。<laughs> Frightened by Scott's shouting, Joey cry Joey's cries can be heard coming from the second floor again. Scott paces around impatiently and commands the officers like servants. Oh my god. Scott tries to stop you, but an officer steps in and holds her back. <laughs> Without another word, Artem goes after Darius and takes you upstairs. Your phone vibrates in your purse. It's a reporter trying to bribe you for information every single time. Good lord. <sighs> what dir dirty money, huh? Yeah, you've illegally accessed my phone. How did you even get this number? 
case is still under investigation. You can wait for the official press release, hun. And client's privacy is important. Insider, you could pay. I'm sorry, you were you were talking to the wrong lawyer. <laughs> Get some investigation going. Both you and Artem attempted to bait Scott while questioning her. Her attitude tells you she knows nothing about Gordon's will, and she didn't attempt to hide her grudge against Gordon for not marrying her. Her attitude towards Morris and Joey was consistent with what you had previously learned. It wouldn't be a stretch to say that Scott is a textbook mistress who only viewed Gordon as a source of money. The only thing out of place is Gordon bandaging up her wound for her. Even if they had a rocky relationship, there are bound to be sweet moments. Scott... His mental health is more than good. Scott... There's one thing that's strange. She talks as if Joey is a means to an end, but she knows what Joey likes to eat. Yeah, and also it's like the the way she put it, she was going, well, this is a snack that will shut her up. Like, that's not... That's not like proof that she cares about her that's just showing that like she's annoyed at hearing this kid like because she's annoyed at hearing her daughter crying and she knows what will stop her daughter from crying so she'd go about her day that's not that's not proof of care in any capacity if this wasn't a premeditated crime harry wouldn't have the chance to clean up the scene if the perpetrator was someone else and Harry's the scapegoat, then tidying up the crime scene wouldn't make much sense. Yeah, There's only a luggage case in a strong box and the bedding in the closet. Where are his clothes? Is there a separate closet for them? But this closet is already quite spacious. Is this how rich people live? Yeah, he probably has like all room for clothes. Oh, okay. Are these pawn tickets? The jewelry items she pawned are worth a fortune. Oh, yeah. But why wouldn't she just go to Mr. Grant? Leaving the palm tickets out in the open like this means Miss Scott isn't trying to hide her financial difficulties. If Mr. Grant really refused to help her out, then their relationship... Yeah. <laughs> the clothes and scarf on the rack must belong to Mr. Grant. Let's see. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, hello. It's Joey's medicine, medical report. The doctors identified Joey as having below average intelligence as well as signs of taste deterioration. Both of them are irreversible damages. Her immune system is also compromised, so she gets sick often. Gong 
you remember such a minute detail after only leafing through my notes? It should date all the way back to her birth. Let me check. Huh? That can't be right. The amount of medication prescribed to Joey more than doubled this month. Thank you, Darius. Huh. What? <laughs> Nothing. I didn't see anything. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna. <laughs> All right, all right. Yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna leave that drawer alone. That's it's not relevant to the case. I think I think we all can uh, put together what that was. If it weren't for work, I wouldn't want to stay want to stare at someone else's bed in their room. Um, if that can we see what I want to see what that little book is. That's all right. Okay, must not be relevant. An air purifier that combines purification, humidification, sterilization, deodorization, and oxygenation functions into one. The sky's really the limit for the rich. This is the kind of abstract art that rich people enjoy. The teacup and the book are untouched, and the sofa doesn't seem to have been moved. Judging by this, nothing physically violent happened in this room. It's Joey's medical bills. Money shouldn't have been a problem for how wealthy the grants are. If the Man, if this comes down to Joanne having like murdered her boyfriend to try and get money for like her daughter's medical bills, like Dude, this is why we need universal health care. Why would a suitcase be here? Oh, it's locked. Okay. Can we look at the... Oh, you look at... Oh, honey, my foundation is uneven. Crap, crap. If Mr. Wing sees me like this, he'll definitely say I need to pay more attention to how I look. Um, I don't think he will. He doesn't seem like the kind of guy who will notice. Or if he does, he does not seem like the kind of person who will comment on it. <laughs> yeah, no, would he even be able to not art him? No. <laughs> yeah, I've already looked at that. I wonder if we can find a key. No? but we can find some medication. There are lots of medicines inside the drawer, including those for heart disease and emergencies. The medications are all very organized. There's no sign of them being searched through or used in a hurry. If Miss Scott was telling the truth, then she had time to put everything back in place after Mr. Grant bandaged up her finger for her. The behavior makes no sense at all, unless Miss Scott had the intention to... Yeah. This is a speaker? It's on the nightstand, so they can sleep to music or... Probably like white noise. Yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah, I've already... Alright. Nothing there. Oh! Oh, wow, that blends right in. What is that? No, go, go back, go back, go back. No, no. Let me... <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, how do I... How do I trigger it to click on that? All right, we're gonna we're gonna just I guess. Oh my god! Please let me click on it. No, it's okay. There we go. They had the re the return button was like right over where it was. Okay. There's some medication underneath the bedside stool. It's full. Looks like it hasn't been opened. The vial's full. Judging by where it was, did Mr. Grant drop it when he fell? Could it be some kind of emergency medicine he keeps on his person? It probably wouldn't be hard for the pharmacy owner to get their hands on medications. If she didn't do anything, then that means... XO3A is neither the drug's name nor an ingredient. Regular manufacturers wouldn't use this kind of code name. It's pink. Even though it's closed, I can smell the scent of strawberries. How odd. <gasps> is this Joey's medication? Okay, so like this might be this might be a bit of a like I might be connecting dots that, that should not be connected, but like um, she did say that Joey likes strawberry pudding, implying that like strawberry is her favorite flavor. So I wouldn't be surprised if her medication was strawberry flavored. Um, and considering the run of pharmaceutical company, right? It's not, it wouldn't be too far fetched to say if they had like a special version of the medication made that was specifically strawberry flavored for Joey. <laughs> Did Mr. Grant get this from some shady channels for his heart disease? No, I really think this is for Joey. You draw an N in the air towards Artem. He nods. Apparently, Artem also suspects that this vial of medication is related to the controlled substances that Simon trafficked. I don't know, I might be wildly wrong with my, my Joey medication theory. I just think that the strawberry connection is a little bit curious. All right, now what did we miss over here? Oh, thought I clicked on that. The accessory box is locked. Do we open it and see? Oh, she's not going to be happy about that. After the preliminary investigation is done, the officer who was sent to retrieve Scott to unlock the accessory box returns. He reports to Darius. Oh! Yep. That's probably coke. White powder. Miss Scott studied pharmacy. She... Could she have tried to refine the surplus of Joey's medication? Or it could be something else like that, yeah. Anyway, it's either way, it's um it's Mama's special little stash. Artem hands over the bottle of pink tablets found under the stool to Darius. Darius takes the bottle and entrusts it to a member of the CSI team. Okay. You know, I think that is actually... Which one have we got? Yeah, so we've got only like 
Uh, about 20 minutes left in time for the stream, so I think we may just end early on this one and continue our investigation next week. Uh, we'll do the investigation and the trial. So I think that is where we're going to end it for today. Um, something of a little, a little cliffhanger there, so to speak. Um, I'm I'm really enjoying this episode. Uh, uh, much more narratively cohesive than the last one. Uh, if you were there for my previous stream or have watched the VOD for that, Rhaenyra, must you be that noisy in your litter box right now? She's trying to like I don't know dig a tunnel in her litter box. Um, but yeah, if you were there for the stream last week um, or watched the VOD for that one, episode two was, I think, structurally and narratively a bit of a mess. It felt like there were a lot of things that might have been like in early drafts of the scripting for it uh, have been relevant, but got cut in like the final edit, but they didn't fully um, adjust for those things being cut. So there's a lot of like things that are tr given weight, like narratively, that ultimately amount to nothing. Um, and a lot of things that feel like they might have been like intended to be red herrings, but they didn't quite uh, lean into it enough to make those work. So it kind of just, it, it was a little bit frazzled narratively. Uh, this one so far is like a much, much tighter script. Uh, and I'm, I'm very intrigued. Uh, and I mean, I also, I'm a, I'm a sucker for family drama, uh, like family drama murders, murder mysteries, especially. So really enjoying this one. Uh, and seeing like Rosa and Artem's dynamics and her just like <laughs> keeps bringing up their like top secret organization. It's like, shut up about the top secret organization, Rosa. Now is not the time. <laughs> so yeah, um, having a, honestly having a blast with this one. But I think that's where we're going to close that up for today. So yeah, we'll be continuing then with parts 10 through 16 next week same time 3 to 5 p.m pst and i'm thinking um probably actually will this week uh do a midweek uh bonus stream of kind of just trying out some of the other little aspects of this game outside of the main uh story levels so you can probably tune in for that i will update my i'll update my twitch schedule and also make a post about that uh probably on my like Tumblr. Uh, so you can keep an eye out for that if that's something that you're interested in joining in on. So yeah, thank you so much to those who stopped by and also thank you to those who are watching this as the recording on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe for more. And if you're on Twitch, don't forget to give a follow if you enjoyed this. And I will see you all again next week. Alright, have a wonderful, wonderful day. All right, bye.